day. All right. Uh, today we want to talk about chemistry section, particularly on separation methods or separation innovations or separation techniques. Please, after watching this video, don't forget to like and to subscribe. All right. Separation methods. Uh, this is first chapter in chemistry uh, combined science. So I'm going to talk about uh, different types of separation methods. I'm going to explain the first method, uh, which is called um, evaporation method. Right, evaporation method. Let me write something. Uh, evaporation method is the first one. Evaporation. Then uh, number two, I'm going to talk about symbol uh, distillation. Then number three, we're going to talk about uh, fractional uh, distillation. These are three methods uh, used uh, to separate some mixtures. Right, method number one is called evaporation. Right, evaporation, so I'm going to draw uh, a stand like this. This is a stand. This is a stand. Then this is our evaporation dish. This is our solution. This is our solution. Right. Uh, this is the heat. This is this is the heat. Right. Evaporation method is very important or is very useful when we want to separate a mixture of liquids and solids. Which means, suppose you want to obtain a, a solid material from a liquid material. The best method or the method we can use uh, from Form 1 knowledge is evaporation what? Method. Alright, suppose we have a mixer like this one. This is a uh, uh, sugar solution. This is sugar solution. Suppose we want to obtain sugar from sugar solution uh, using evaporation method. So we have evaporation dish. This is evaporation dish. This is uh, evaporation dish. So we heat the evaporation dish. And when water reached its boiling point, which is 100 degrees Celsius, we heat until water reached its boiling point, which is 100 degrees degrees Celsius, which means water boil at 100 degrees Celsius. When water reached its boiling point, which is 100 degrees Celsius, the water started to evaporate, leaving the crystals of sugar behind. Leaving the crystals of sugar behind. Then we can say we have separated sugar from sugar solution. So when water reached its boiling point, it starts to evaporate. Uh, this is evaporation. This is water evaporating. This is water evaporating. So when water evaporates, uh, we're left with only uh, salt crystals. We're left with only salt crystals like this. Uh, this is our evaporation dish. Uh, we're left with salt crystals like this. Salt crystals. Salt crystals. After evaporation, after evaporation, we left with salt uh, crystals. This is salt uh, crystals. Uh, we left with the salt what? Salt crystals. Or sugar crystals. For example, this experiment was about uh, sugar crystals. So we left with sugar crystals. Right, another method which can be used to separate uh, solid from liquid, solid from liquid, is called fractional distillation. 
and we can also use a simple distillation. So I'm going to explain first the simple what? Distillation. This is the diagram for simple distillation. So I'm going to explain in detail how are we going to separate solid from liquids. Right? We have a simple distillation in apparatus like this. We have a thermometer, as you can see. Uh, this is the thermometer. This is the thermometer. This is the thermometer. Right? What is the purpose of this thermometer? The purpose of the thermometer is to measure the temperature at which the liquid started to evaporate. Is to measure the temperature at which the liquid started to evaporate. That is the purpose of the thermometer. What is the purpose of this symbol distillation? The purpose of simple distillation is to separate solid from liquids. Or it can also be used to separate two liquids. It can also be used to separate two liquids with the different boiling points. So a simple distillation is very simple. It is the method of separation used either to separate solid from liquid or it is used to separate two liquids that is a different boiling points. Two liquids with a different boiling points. For example, we can separate a mixture of water and ink. Why? Because these liquids, they have different boiling points. Right. So, for example, this experiment it shows that uh, uh, these apparatus are set up for the separation of salt solution. Separation of salt solution. What happens during the simple distillation of a salt solution? Right. We heat the solution. That is the salt solution. We heat the what? The solution. And when the water reached its boiling point, which is 100 degrees Celsius, when water reached its boiling point, which is 100 degrees Celsius, the water started to evaporate. When the water it evaporates, it enters into the condenser. The purpose of the condenser is to cool the vapor to form liquid again. Is to cool the vapor to form liquid again. Remember, let me repeat. When water reached its boiling point, water started to evaporate. The boiling point for water is 100 degrees Celsius. It started to evaporate. And it enters through the condenser. The purpose of the condenser is to cool the vapor to form a liquid. This is the liquid collected in the receiving beaker here. And the liquid collected is called distillate or pure water. The liquid collected after passing through the condenser is called distillate. When we are using a simple distillation. Only when we are using a simple what? Distillation. The liquid collected is called distillate. Is called distillate or pure water. When all the water evaporates and is being collected as liquid in the receiving beaker, we left here uh, with only uh, salt crystals. Salt crystals. We left with only salt what? Crystals. Remember, I said the purpose of the thermometer is to measure the temperature. The purpose of the condenser is to cool the vapor to form a liquid again. The purpose of the Benson burner is to heat the solution until water reached its boiling point, which is 100 degrees Celsius, and it started to evaporate, leaving the salt crystals behind. That's how we separate a mixture of a liquid and a solid using simple distillation. Right? The question can come and say, because these two methods, are, which is a simple distillation and evaporation, these two methods are used both to separate a mixture of solid and a liquid or to obtain solid from a liquid uh, solution. So the question can come and say, what is the advantage of using simple distillation? Of using simple distillation over evaporation? What is the advantage? Right. Look at the simple distillation here. 
In the same legislation, we obtain a uh, salt crystal. They are left behind. And water is collected here, which is called pure water or distillate. So the advantage of using this one, this simple distillation, is that simple distillation avoid the loss of water. Simple distillation avoid loss of water. But evaporation, water is lost into the environment. Water is lost into the what? Atmosphere. That is the disadvantage of using uh, evaporation over simple distillation. Simple distillation, avoid loss of water and evaporation. Water is lost into the atmosphere. So scientists, they prefer to use a uh, simple distillation when they want to obtain salt from salt solution. Right. This method, again, this method, simple distillation, can be used to separate two liquids. Those two liquids must have different boiling points. So how this simple distillation are going to separate these two liquids? The first liquid with the lower boiling point, it is started to evaporate and leaving the liquid with the higher boiling point behind. Then we have separated the two, that is the two liquids with the different boiling points. Right, let us move on to another method called fractional distillation. This is the diagram for fractional distillation. Again, we have the thermometer. This is the thermometer. What is the, the purpose of the thermometer? Again, is to measure the temperature. Is the measure the temperature? Is to measure the temperature when the liquid is started to what to evaporate? Right. I think we are together. Right. We want to talk about the purpose of fractional distillation. Fractional distillation is used to separate two liquids. That are miserable, 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 that are miserable. Miserable, it means those liquids must mix easily. Those liquids must mix easily. That is miserable. That is the meaning of the word miserable. So, fractional distillation is used to separate two liquids that are miserable, which means that can mix easily. But one of the method, one of the liquids, one of the liquids must be more volatile, must be more volatile, must be more volatile. What is the meaning of the word volatile? Volatile, it means one liquid must evaporate more than the other. Must evaporate more than the what? The other. Which means the one liquid must start to evaporate before the other liquid is started to what? To evaporate. That's where we can use fractional distillation. My liquids are actually going to sangana. Ach sangana one, guy evaporate. Imwesa tiaita se, ya evaporate. Do patino shandisa inons fractional distillation. Ya takatarisa. Right. Fractional distillation uh, in my um, up my materials like siana siana or my apparatus like siana siana. One that we have thermometer and the purpose of the thermometer is to measure the temperature. Is to measure the temperature when the liquid is started to evaporate. Right. Uh, fractional distillation. It have what you call um, fractionating column. This is the fractionating column. This one. This one. It's called the fractionating column. This is the fractionating column. And inside the fractionating column, inside the fractionating column, there are rounded glass beads. These are rounded glass beads. These are rounded glass beads. They are rounded glass beads. They are rounded glass beads. So, what is the purpose of these rounded glass beads? The purpose of the rounded glass beads is to allow the vapor to move freely. 
all other scientists that they can say the purpose of the rounded glass beads is to allow the vapor to condense many times, to condense many times, or to allow the vapor to move freely, to allow the vapor to move freely. When the vapor moves freely through rounded glass beads, it enters into the condenser. What is the purpose of the condenser again? Is to cool the vapor to form a liquid again. And this is the liquid being collected. And in fractional distance, it's different. The liquids or the mixture of two liquids are uh, which are being separated. They are not called uh, mixtures or liquids or what else. They are called fractions. The liquids separated using fractional distillation are called fractions, which means the first fraction to be collected in the receiving beaker, the first fraction to be collected in the receiving beaker is the fraction or must be the fraction with the lowest boiling point. That is the first fraction to be collected. And the last fraction is left in the rounded glass, uh, it's a rounded uh, bottom flask here. It's left here, right? Uh, when we heat here, uh, when we heat, we use this fractionating uh, uh, fractional distillation to separate two liquids uh, that are miserable, which means those liquids must mix what is. And this method is an ideal when one of the liquids is more volatile. Is more what? Volatile, which means evaporate more easily. Evaporate more easily than the what? Than the other. Right. Uh, this is how the fractional uh, distillation works. And when we eat here, the solution, they evaporate and enter into the what? Into the fractionating column where the liquid is condensed and the liquid with the lower boiling point, uh, they move through this one and they enter, they enter into the what? Into the condenser where the liquid is cooled and form a liquid again. This is how fractional distillation works. Right? I think you are assisted.